In this video, we're going to work through task three from Applied Management Accounting Sample Assessment 2. And this task looks at standard costing and variances. So it tells us that Tubbs Limited manufacture plant pots from recycled plastic, which they sell to garden centres in the UK. You've been provided with the following activity data. So we've been provided with a budget. So they originally planned to make 600,000 plant pots and each plant pot would use 20 grams of materials and those materials would cost two pounds per kilogram. So that was the plan, but what actually happened, they actually made one million plant pots, um, but they were able to reduce the amount of materials in each pot. So they only used 19 grams of materials. And also they seem to have managed to negotiate a better price. So they only paid one pounds 82 per kilogram. So we've got some other information as well, but let's not look at that for now. Uh, let's focus on part A, which asks us to prepare the direct material cost statement from the information provided. And we need to put our answers to the nearest whole number. So remember, it's important in the computer marked tasks that you follow the instructions because the computer will not give you credit if you round to the wrong number of decimal places. So we provided with a statement. So we need to work out what the standard material cost of production was and then what the materials price variance, materials usage variance and materials cost is. And notice it's asking us to show the variance numbers either as positive or negative, depending on whether they are favorable or adverse. So um, how should we approach this? So in our learning materials, uh, one of the techniques we've suggested is to use a, a pro forma table to help you structure the information that you've been given. And so that's what we're going to put on the screen now we want to be able to reconcile the actual cost with the budget cost, although changing only one variable at a time. But notice, and importantly, the budget cost is going to be for the actual activity. So remember that our actual activity relates to 1 million plant plot production, not the 600,000. So for our actual cost, what we'll need to consider is the actual number of units that we manufactured and we're going to multiply that by the actual kilograms per unit and then we'll multiply that by the actual cost per kilogram. And then what we're going to do is compare that with the actual number of units multiplied by the actual kilograms per unit, but multiplied now by the budgeted, the standard cost per kilogram. So remember in our variance analysis, we want to be able to understand the effect of different factors on our overall cost. So in this case, we're just comparing the adjustment of one factor. The other two factors stay the same, but we just want to identify what if we change the cost per kilogram? What will be the impact on our business? And then for our, our third row, we're still going to use our actual number of units, but now we want to consider what's the standard number of kilograms per unit. And then we still multiply by the standard cost per kilogram. So notice in this case, when we're comparing row two and row three, Again, we're keeping two of the factors the same, but we want to identify what is the impact of the kilograms per unit. So what's going to happen is that we're going to work out a, a total for each of these three lines. And then when we compare those totals, yeah, the, when we compare those two numbers, that's going to give us our price variance because we're just thinking about the change in the price per kilogram. And then when we compare these two totals, we're going to have the usage variance because in this case, we're only comparing the change in the kilograms per unit. 
Notice the pattern as well. So the way that I like to remember this is just looking at the, the, the letters here. So you'll see that there's a nice pattern that may help you to remember this. So in the first line is actual, actual, actual. In the second line, actual, actual, standard. In the third line, actual, standard, standard. Now, in this case, we're looking at the materials variances, but it's the same pattern for the labor variances and the same pattern for any uh, variable overhead variances as well. So uh, when I'm preparing for these questions, this is all that I remember. And uh, I just use that to structure all, all of my answers. So what we can do now, now that we've got the structure for our answer, we can start plugging in some of the numbers from the question into the, the structure. So we know that for the actual number of units, so we've been given a figure of 1 million here. So I can put that 1 million because remember all of these figures are based on the actual activity level because we need to be able to compare like with like. And then for the second column, so the actual kilograms per unit, so we're going to be multiplying that by 0 0.019, 0 0.019. But our planned consumption was going to be 0 0.020. And then for our cost per kilogram, so the actual was £1.82. And then the standard was £2. So having plugged all those numbers into our table, we can now multiply them all through to get our totals. And then when we have those totals, we can just compare them. So we can see the difference between the first two figures. We have 3,420. And we can see that the actual cost is lower than the second number. So this is a favorable variance. Our price variance is favorable. We managed to spend less money than planned. And then when we compare the second and third numbers, we can see that we've got a difference of 2000 here. And again, we can see it's favorable. The second number is smaller than the third number. So we have a 2000 favorable usage variance here. So now that we've completed that, we can fill in our answer. So we can see that our standard cost of production, well, that's the, the 40,000 that we calculated at the bottom of our table. The materials price variance was 3,420. That's a positive number because it's favorable. The materials usage variance is 2,000 favorable. And again, notice that the last number, uh, there, there's a zero there because that will be automatically calculated in the assessment. So it can tell us that the overall cost variance are these two numbers added together. That's going to be 5420. Yeah. And what is that 5420? Yeah, let's make sure we understand that. So originally we planned to make our 1 million pots and we planned that it should have cost us 40,000 pounds but it actually cost us £5,420 less than that. Now, why? Because we were able to make the pots using fewer materials, but also for the materials we did use, we paid less for them. Now, remember, in your assessment, we've also got the idea of a reverse variance question where they might give you the variance number and what you need to do is calculate one of the missing numbers. You might need to find out how many kilograms they actually use per unit. So the technique still applies. You know, fill out this table, put in the numbers that you do have and then just find out which are the missing figures. And you just we need to work backwards to calculate those missing figures. Now, notice in this particular question, it gave us the actual number of units and the kilograms per pot. But it could be that they might give you the combination of these two figures. They may just say that overall we use this number of kilograms in production. So if, if that's the case, just be aware that you might need to complete these two figures together rather than individually. Okay, so there we are. There's the, the first part of the question for six marks. 
Uh, let's move on to part B now. So in part B, it's asking us, based on the discussion with the production manager for each of the statements below, identify whether the statement impacts upon the standard price or standard usage, and then calculate the revised standard. Okay, so it's telling us, again, if we scroll back to the beginning, at the moment, we have, based on our budget, a standard number of kilograms per pot and a standard cost per kilogram. And the question is asking us, based on the discussions with the production manager here, should we adjust those standards? Is there some impact? So the, the, the text that we've been given there is reproduced in the table, um, mostly. So let, let's see what we have here. And the choices available to us, again, we've just shown those at the bottom of the screen at the moment. So the first one then is that the overall price so the overall, sorry, the overall increase in availability of materials has reduced materials prices by 20%. Okay. So yes, we can see that there's more of the materials available, there's a greater supply. And if you can remember from your sort of economic studies, if we have more supply, then the price will often go down. So that's what's happened here. Yeah, we have reduced material prices of 20%. So which standard will that affect? Well, that's going to be our price standard, isn't it? Yeah, there's no an effect on the kilograms we're using for each product. So yeah, we could choose the price standard. So what is the, the standard at the moment? So it, it's telling us that at the moment, our cost per kilogram is two pounds and if the price is going to go down by 20 percent then that will change to one pound sixty Okay, so that's the choice we need to go for that the last option there. So we can see that yeah, that's one of the choices is one pound sixty per kilogram. Yeah, that should be our revised standard. The next one then, the materials had been sourced from a different supplier who promised better quality, but at a slightly higher price. The usual supplier of these materials will resume deliveries next period. OK, well, the issue that we need to focus on here is that we've been using a different supplier temporarily. Yeah, so the usual supplier will resume deliveries next period. And that means that the price will return to normal and the, the quality will return to normal as well. So in that case, we should choose that none of the standards will be changed because this is just temporary. And also, we've not been provided with any figures here. There's no percentage changes. So for this particular answer, I think we need to select cannot be calculated due to insufficient information. And finally, their major customers have requested a decrease in the standard pot size by 5%. So yeah, we have been given a number here. Yeah, we're decreasing the pot size by 5%. And that was applied to all items produced. So in this case, this has no effect on the price. You know, this is all about usage now, isn't it? Yeah, so we're going to be, if we're making smaller pots, that means we're going to be using fewer kilograms per pot. So that's going to affect our usage. So let's go back to the table at the beginning then. So yes, we're changing this by 5%. So at the moment, where our standard is that we're using 20 grams per pot. So we need to reduce that by 5%. So we're going to multiply that by 95%. And that gives us a new standard of 0 0.019 kilograms per pot. Okay, so that's our answer for the final area here. And we can see that's one of the choices. And so we're, we're changing the standard as a result of that request from the customers. 
And then finally, in part C of the task, it asks us to complete the following statements about whether or not the tubs should, be, should change the standards. So for the price standard, so we need to choose you know, should we or should we not change the standard. Okay. So let's have a look at the text again. So it tells us the overall increase in the availability materials in the marketplace has recently reduced prices by 20%. But it then also tells us it's not known whether this will continue. So it could be that the supply will go back to normal and therefore we shouldn't really change the standard, should we? Okay. This is just a temporary issue. Okay. So for the, the price standard, okay, we should not change this because it's just a short term change to the supply. Um, it tells us then if the standard is changed, it could have, well, if it does change and we expect things to be cheaper in the long term, but actually just goes back to normal, then that would be quite demotivating for the budget holder because they'd never be able to meet the, the price expectations when the supply goes back to normal. Then what about the usage standard? You know, should we change that or, or not? So again, let's have a look at the information we have. Let's remind ourselves. So their major customers requested a decrease in the standard pot size, which was applied to all items. So that doesn't sound like a temporary issue, does it? That sounds like as if they, they want to have that as a, a permanent change. So that would suggest then that we should make the change to the standard because this is a long term decision. And having changed that permanently and it's a much more realistic standard now because it's much more realistic, then it should be a motivating effect on the budget holder.